Okay, here we go. And for those of you who are on Facebook, hi, I'm Bonita. And I'm here, you can't see them, but I'm here with my group that we meet every Wednesday night and receive lessons from the librarians of the Akashic Records. Um, if you ever want to join us here, I'm going to real quick put a link to it so you can join us anytime. But um, they share messages about healing and um, growth. We have, God, what are some of the things we've done with them? We've learned they're really into like helping us heal our planet. So we have gone back in time and learned how to bring the energy of times when our planet was more healthy and literally stitch it to the present day and then go to the future when our planet's healthy again and stitch it to the present day. We have met with our souls. We've met with our librarians. We've gone through time and space and dimensions and learned how to go through time tubes and learned a lot of healing techniques, especially healing beginning with self. And um, it's, um, it's good. <laughs> it's some good stuff. And um, so tonight I am going to share um, a message that the librarians specifically asked me to share. Those of you who've never seen me channel before, I leave my body and the librarians come in. So um, they have a message they want to share. And if you watching on Facebook have any questions, feel welcome to uh, type them in comments. I'll get to them later. And of course, in our wonderful group here with me on Zoom, ask any questions you want. Um, one of the nice things about the Akashic librarians is they care as much about helping us with our personal issues as about helping our planet with its growth and evolution. Okay, everyone, let's begin with our welcoming meditation. Everyone on Facebook, you are welcome to join in. Right. Give your body permission to relax. We no longer need to manage or control our bodies today. Our bodies can control and manage themselves. And give your feet permission to relax so that all the energy and activity in your body, all the energy can just flow down through your body, down through your legs, through your feet, into earth, where our beloved earth mother, Gaia, Pacamama, pulls all of our energy directly into her heart where she transforms it to the highest frequency of love and then sends it on outward to all of our brothers and sisters of the planet, be they two-legged, four-legged, winged, no-legged. As all of this energy is flowing out through our bodies, invite the top of your head to open up. Become receptive. Give the top of your head permission to relax. If you feel any pain or pressure or discomfort, acknowledge it and give it permission to resolve itself. And as we open up to receive divine blessings, our souls, our personal Akashic librarians, our guardian angels, our soul families, they're there to watch over us, to look out for us, to protect us, to act as guardians of the energetic gateway and make sure only any energy 
that matches the frequency of your soul, your guardian angel, those who love you from the divine, only that energy as filtered through them may flow in through your hara line, in through your crown chakra, the light airy top of your head, in filtering around through your mind, your brain, through all the neurons and synapses, your pineal gland and third eye, and flow down through your neck, your spine, on down into your body, your limbs, filling your chakras, your organs, your flesh, your veins and arteries. If there's any part of your body that is feeling pain or pressure or sharp or tight, acknowledge it. And unless it's something where a little stretch can take care of it, if it's something that's just choosing to feel tight or rejecting of love, give it permission to take a little break from that action and absorb, partake in what's happening. Absorb the love and flow with it so that all this beautiful divine energy is flowing through your body cleaning, lightening, brightening your energy and flowing on out through your feet to our Divine Mother. Your soul is with you. Your guardian angel is with you. Your personal Akashic librarian is with you. The Akashic Collective is here waiting impatiently to come into my body and their energy will flow through me to you and from them directly to you as well. Be receptive to any messages you get, no matter how subtle they are, accept them. Now I will leave the librarians will flow into my body. Hmm. 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 Yes, hmm. indeed, we are here. Our little spark scampered so quickly, she did not tidy all her corners. We are sending some of her energy to her so that we may completely fill the vessel. Hmm. As we think it is time that our conduit received a much needed upgrade. She's hmm, not as harmonious with our frequencies as, hmm, hmm, as she could be. Hmm. We will work on this. Hmm. Hmm. We are so pleased to be with you this evening, this beautiful evening. And we have a message we are excited to share with you. Hmm. For certainly your planet is in a transition sphere. Hmm. We are aware that 
recent occurrences in various parts of your globe have come to a ending point of one cycle and a beginning of the next. We wish to speak with you on this for certainly it may be an overwhelming experience. You know that you are here to help heal your planet, to help assure your planet to its next stage of reality, yet such an activity may cause you to wish to hide in a corner until everything is finished. This is understandable, for it may feel quite awesome and terrifying. So we wish to remind you, there's very few kinds of relationships in existence. When the situation of your planet or your nation or your community is overwhelming, you may say, how would I respond to this if it were in a more intimate environment rather than my nation in this peril, what if it were in my family for a comparable situation? For example, if you see the fighting over different beliefs, then you may think, how do you and your friends resolve your issues when you have different beliefs, but you wish to continue maintain your friendship with mutual respect and appreciation between you? Certainly, such a situation has occurred within your lifetime. Think of the moment when you and someone dear have disagreed on hmm, a diet. Perhaps one of you is vegan and the other craves meat, yet you still wish to be friends and even go on weekend getaway vacations together. How do you respect and resolve? Or Hmm. One of you is one religion and one is another religion. One of you hmm, is artistic and the other is very scientific. You find ways to mediate for your friendship is of more value to you than these differing microbial details. And you know that when you resolve your issues, you both feel very happy for you both know that you are of greater value from this person you hold in higher regard than the beliefs that stand between you and vice versa. It is a wonderful feeling to resolve these issues and come together with even greater harmonious connection. Hmm. So if you are overwhelmed when as a nation or a planet, you will see only the fighting. Remember, how is it with you and your intimate beloved companions? And then bring that concept to the greater image. You will realize it is unlikely that one person will change the attitude of so many others. However, one person and then two people 
and then 10 people, and then a thousand people have the ability to say, let us work together in peace. I will not fight you. I will only harmonize with you or respect you from a distance. Have we questions on this? Of course, because this is so obvious when you value a friendship. You will notice the friendships you dissolve because of these differing beliefs are not about the beliefs. They are about your inability to rise above your differences. Perhaps you extend your hand, but they put in place parameters. If you wish to be my friend, you must blank, blank, blank. And you say, hmm, I cannot live under these terms, so I may not be your friend. Then you know it is not the person you are rejecting, but the parameters that they were so adamant upon. Of course, there are many in your culture that you will choose not to be friends with. However, you need not live in acrimony. You may not fear them or hate them. You may, again, live your life, share your goodness, and invite all who wish to partake in your goodness to do so, you hope that you will find enough mutually comfortable connection that the areas of disconnect are not a part of your relationship equation. You take this formula and raise it up to a community, a nation, a continent, a planet, it is the same formula. Now, hmm, you may say, but I am a good person and this other one is a rotten scoundrel. This other person is very bad. Ergo, I cannot be friends with this person, and I'm feeling quite superior. You may even say, but I am a humble person, so now I'm in conflict. Hmm. Well, they may be saying the same about you, of course. There are very few people who really think they are bad, and claim it with glee. However, good or bad, if you are an evolved enough person that you are actually listening to our words, then you know, no matter how humble you may be in this life, Oh, I am nothing. I have no skills. I'm not an energy healer. I'm just a person. Hmm. We can tell you if you are listening to us, then you are listen to what we're saying here. If you are listening to us, then we can tell you you are without question an old soul. You have already lived many lives. You have already learned many karmic lessons. And how do you think that you have learned these lessons? By being a divine angel in each life? No. We tell you if you at this moment are an experienced soul, then you have lived many rotten scoundrel lives in your past. So how can you feel superior 
to an other when they are merely doing in this life what you have done in a past life? Hmm. When they have the spark of divine in their core as you do. When they have a soul as you do. There is no good or bad in this equation of who deserves to be considered a good human or a bad human. There are those who have more experience or less. There are those who are on a karmic path for this life to be this temperament or that. Perhaps there are several young souls who say we wish to be rotten in this life. They go to their teacher and say, will you be our parent in this life and make sure that we are rotten and reach all of these karmic lessons in this life? The teacher will say, I will have to be a very difficult, horrible parent for this to happen. The students will say, thank you, teacher. We are so grateful. Then they come to life. It is very traumatic for everyone. And then after life, they return. And they go like, oh, look, we were rotten throughout. And we reached all of our karmic lessons. Thank you. And they are very happy. For again, they are in their soul. So, hmm, how can you say it is impossible for you to befriend this person when it is likely you have been this person in the past or you will be in the future. Hmm. So yes, we ask you to step aside from your moral judgment values and embrace what is good between you both, what connects it naturally. Do not worry about the rest. Have we questions on this? Wonderful. We are coherent this evening. There is your wonderful meditation. I am not my body. I am not my thoughts. I am my soul. Hmm. You are aware of this. For what is your body? The body you have in this life is the body your soul designed for you to have to be the perfect vessel for the life that you have chosen to live. You must always honor your body. For the body truly is not yours. It was designed by an other as a vehicle for you. And what body are you speaking of? The body you had as an infant or a child or currently or as a very elderly person. The body you had when you were ill or healthy. Your body is ever changing, ever in flow. For certainly, you are not your body. Your body is like a river, ever flowing, ever changing, ever growing. Are you your thoughts? Which thoughts would you be? The thoughts you had as a child, or now, or when? The thoughts you have when you are angry, or in such deep love, or then betrayal from your deep love, and then with the next love so different, or with your friends, or, or in your pursuits of studious knowledge. Are you your thoughts? No, of course not. Your thoughts as a child are not your thoughts now. Your thoughts now are not your thoughts in a few years. What are you? What are you? You are 
flowing experience wrapped around a spark of your soul. Each human on your planet, each animal, each plant, your planet itself is flowing experience wrapped around a spark of soul. Ever flowing, ever changing. For energy is ever flowing and we are each connected to our souls and our souls are connected to the great network of existence which was created by our divine source so the energies are ever flowing through us and as such a part of you is always flowing through the network of all divine existence and part of the network is always flowing through you so what are you is a part of the divine network of all existence that is what you are and as such you have the invitation to connect as freely with that as you do with this facade of an environment you call your life. And we say facade not because it is fake or shallow, but because you are the creator of your life. You are the creator of your body and your mind and your thoughts. If you wish to have a more hmm, benevolent experience, invite the ever flowing energies of the great multi dimensional network of existence to also, as it is constantly flowing, fill you as it continues on. This is a greater way to help with healing those around you. Imagine if you spent a few minutes, just a few minutes, meditating upon the great interconnection energetic interconnection, the network, the grid, the great multidimensional mandala, and the fact that everyone and everything is connected with this, and invite this energy to connect consciously with you, and to consciously receive this energy and allow it to emanate from you towards those who are around you, whether you care for them or not, or emanate from you to those you do care about through your energetic connections flowing, everything is flowing. Imagine just a few minutes with this activity, what great goodness you may shine forth. We would like to try this with you for a moment. We hope it will be enjoyable. So invite yourself to Relax and just don't worry about your tasks and lists and faults and headaches and complaints. These are purely of your society's creation. We will endeavor to help you shift this. Oh, invite yourself to be open 
and think about the fact that you are always connected with your soul. Your soul created you. Your soul is always watching over you. There is always pure love flowing from your soul to you. You may say to your soul, thank you for creating me. And I would like to directly receive your love into me. I would be grateful for this. And invite your body. Body, please receive love from soul. Please open up and receive my soul's love. And invite this energy to flow in, to flow in. It will find its place. And you may think your angel, who is with you at all times, often unappreciated. Say to your angel, I do appreciate you. I thank you. I thank you for watching out for me, for sending me many supports and guidances as I bumble through my life. And I love you for this. I send love from my heart to you for being such a good guardian angel, so kind and considerate, so thoughtful. I would like to tell my body now, open up, for your angel loves you purely. Your angel is always sending love to you. You may receive this love from your angel and invite it to flow through you and fill your being, your soul and your angel. They love you very dearly. Hmm. Invite this love to fill you and wash over you. And of course, your angel is connected to the angelic mandalas, the grids, the communities, as your soul is connected to all of humanity's energetic soul selves. And they're connected to the grids that go out there to other dimensions, other frequencies, other collectives. There's a vast array of networks that are always open to you. And all of them connect again at our divine source of all creation. Imagine if you connect with all the networks and our divine source connects with all the networks, then you may, you are as connected as our divine source. You may feel that light of godliness within you and you will see there is only love. When you combine all the networks, they make the equation that results in love, only love. There you have the answer. If you are not your body, you are not your emotions, you are not your thoughts or your intellect, what are you? You are love. Invite your lovingness to be fed by these great mandalas of reality, these great networks and connections. Allow them to feed you and flow from you. And when you look about, you see maybe not so much hatred, but hunger. Those who hunger for love, they are starving for it. 
invite this beautiful love to just flow through you outward. You will be surprised how many will quench their palates upon this energy and raise their frequency. So truly, there is no need to feel afraid or overwhelmed. Those emotions are your choice to make. They have no positive effect upon any actions you must take in your life. If you are quivering in fear, you must still accomplish your daily tasks. The fear is your choice. If you connect and flow with love, you still go forward and accomplish your tasks. You accomplish them through a state of health and love, caring and concern. This also is your choice. We will not dictate to you who or how you choose to be. We merely express that there are choices. And the choices are always yours. But certainly, even if you choose to go into the bowels of the most challenging karmic lesson, to occasionally feed upon the mandalas of all connection through love will be of benefit. Provide you with much needed respites. Remember, humanity must come together. There is no choice on this. The only question is how difficult will humans make their current karmic lesson before you reach the conclusion of coming together. The more you fight with each other, the more difficult your experience will be. The more you learn to connect through love, the easier and quicker this karmic lesson will resolve and you will find a more enjoyable time on your planet as Earth is going through its next cycle of personal planetary evolution. So we invite you to invite the love to realize your state as a child and peer of God, of your soul, of the angels, of all dimensions and reality, and connect through love. This is our lesson. We are grateful that we were able to share this with you. And now it is time for us to vacate for our conduit to bring her hmm, earthy return. Blessings to you all. We hope to speak with you again soon and through love. Thank you, teachers. Thank you. Oh.
Oh, man. Oh. You know, when they come in, every single time, every time, everything goes all like orange and red. As I'm pulling out, all I see is like red and orange. And when they leave and I come back, everything is always purple. And then it goes to like blue and green, lots and lots of blue and green as I'm coming in. And then hmm. I've transitioned back. Interesting. So thank you all who joined us on Facebook. Hi. And um, if you want more of this, come join us. Normally we meet on Wednesday nights, but, um, we're, uh, you know, we're tonight because last night was the inauguration and the energy was too much. <laughs> so, um, uh, you guys on Zoom, please stay and on Facebook. Thank you and, um, have a wonderful night or day, whatever it is.